What's going on, y'all? Hopefully everybody's doing well. Hopefully everybody having a great day. Hopefully everybody had a great week. Welcome back to the channel. So it's been a couple weeks since I've uploaded a video, done a live, anything like that. And uh, there's a reason for that. I had to take a little bit of time off from YouTube, from a few things in life. So... A couple years ago, during the time of Corona, those of you that have been around the channel for a little while will remember this. I was dealing with a stalker, right? There's a video I have on the channel sort of explaining it, what I was going through at the time. And uh, this person, I met the person one time and this person was going through some type of mental breakdown, you know, mentally. I spoke to the person, you know, that like the person's family reached out to me. It was, it's a guy. The person's family reached out to me and, you know, they were extremely apo apologetic. They were extremely apologetic and they said that, you know, he's known to have mental health issues. He's had them for a long time. Apparently, the guy, his father had passed away. And I don't know if it was like the anniversary of his father's death or whatever it was, but that's basically what triggered it. So some people are like all right well why some and a lot of people ask and me myself this was a question like why is are these feelings being directed or channeled towards me right and i honestly don't know there's a couple theories that i have and you know even his own family have so it all basically started i want to say Whatever year coronavirus happened, that's that's right around the time it happened. So I had posted a picture and it was, I had a, a dress shirt on. I had a white dress shirt and a black tie. And either the ground, like the tiling was uh, black and white, like, a, you know, like a checkerboard. Either the ground was or the background. I think it was a picture that I had took one time when me and Rachel were in Puerto Rico. And when I posted that picture, that seemed to be one of the things that set him off. And he said, that's a demonic symbol. That's a sign of like Masons. And you know, that, that was sort of what it was. So let me take you back about a week prior to that. So I had purchased the building next to where my barber shop is now, right? And we were doing some work in there. You know, the shop was closed down because of the corona. So I, I took advantage of that and I started doing work in the building. I had to literally gut all three floors down to bare walls and, you know, the bare floor and start working on it. So as I was working on it, you know, we're working on the building. One day I come to the building to work on it and I noticed that there was a, it was an against the grain shirt and it was like ripped in half. It was, it was, it looked like it was cut up and it was tied on to the door handle of the building. So, you know, we had been doing work there, like I said, for about two weeks before that. And we were using, you know, it got dirty and dusty. So we were using anything we could find at times for, you know, a face mask, like a, um, you know, a mask basically. So I, I thought, all right, maybe me or one of the guys um, used this as a mask. And, you know, we maybe had it around our neck and went to jump at our car. And then we realized we had it. So we just left it on the door. That's, that's what I thought, right? And I just, when I grabbed it the next day, I grabbed the shirt and sort of just threw it on the floor. Didn't pay no mind to it. And, you know, I threw it, when I went into the shop, I just threw it on the floor. It was a pile of like rags and stuff. And then I started getting these messages from this gentleman. The messages were, were being sent to me through Facebook mostly, 
through like Facebook Live. He would go on live and go on these crazy rants and he would threaten the lives of me, my children, uh, Rachel. Rachel at this time was pregnant with Mercy. So he would make these threats, right? And and they were very, uh, very vile threats. So initially when I first started receiving them, initially I reacted the same way any other man is going to react when somebody threatens their home, threatens their life, threatens their children, you know, their family. That's how I, I reacted instantly. I got on the offensive and said, okay, I'm going to do some homework, see who this person is. And then literally that same day, his family started reaching out to me because evidently it had been going on on Facebook for a couple days, but I'm not really on there. So, you know, I, I had no idea. And they started to tell me, you know, look, he's going through this mental breakdown. He's directing all this to you. And they, they, you know, his mother came straight out and told me, she said, uh, look, I honestly think that my son no longer wants to be here on earth. You know what I'm saying? I just have to beat around the bush a little bit because of YouTube. It said, I, I honestly think he doesn't want to be here on this earth. He doesn't have the courage or the stupidity, whichever way you look at it, to do it himself. So he's sort of playing in traffic, you know, for a lack of better terms. So once they said this and they were like, look, you know, he's got some stuff going on. And very, very quickly after I watched a couple of videos, I said, all right, this person isn't like criminally crazy, you know, to the point where you know, uh, like I, I, I should be super, super worried. I said, this person is acting a role and I think they're looking to get a response. And so then in one of his messages, he said, Oh, did you get that shirt? And I was like, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? And then it remembered, I said, Oh, there was a shirt that was tied on the doorknob. So instantly I, I went straight to the shop checked it out the shirt i thought it was ripped up the shirt had been like cut with a knife because there was different slits in it it had been cut with a knife and there looked like there was something on it because it was like it was a little crusty so it made me think that there was like blood on it or something you know so i started looking at the door handle and sure enough i seen that um there was blood drops on the ground and then i looked at you know the door the door is wooden and the handle and i started looking at it and you know flashing a light on it and i could see that there were stains on there so i went and got um like a alcohol a baby wipe alcohol wipe and wiped the door and when i did it looked just as if i wiped it in blood so i said okay i said all right this is what we're dealing with here right so I made, you know, my family aware. I told the kids, I said, look, I want all the doors locked. When you guys go places, you have to let me know. I want to know where everybody's at, you know, basically. <clears throat> I had made the police aware also. A matter of fact, yeah, I had, I had uh, called the cops and let the cops aware. So it turns out I was the second person that he had done this to. The first person was his employer. He had worked at a restaurant slash bar in my area. And the gentleman that was his boss that owned that restaurant bar ended up reaching out to me. And he told me, he said, look, I see dude is focused on you now. I said, yeah. I said, look, I don't even know him. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm not surprised. And he told me, look, he, he seems to have this wish not to be alive anymore so he said that's you know that's we were talking and you know that's sort of why we think that he's doing all this so evidently he had done the same thing to him first so every time he would do it he would go on live right and and when i spoke to the police the police said block him 
you know, don't respond to him. So I wouldn't respond, but I didn't block him because that's how I would keep up with what he was doing because everything he did, he did on live, on Facebook Live. So I seen him one time driving behind my house on Facebook Live. At the time, I was in uh, West Virginia or Maryland, one of those. I took Major, me and Major went on like a guy's trip because it was COVID to to buy something off of Facebook Marketplace. It was like a laser we were going to buy. So I'm there and Rachel sends me the video link. It says, yo, watch this. That's the road behind our house. And I see it's the road behind our house. He's driving back there. He's making all these irrational threats. And it's it's it was very disturbing. So instantly I told her, yo, bring the dogs inside, lock the door, and I'll be right home. I fly home. The cops... You know, she called the cops and, and, and it was so weird and so, so disappointing also because the cops were aware of everything that was going on and they were like, basically like, yo, we can't do nothing. Uh, this is taking, this is taking place on Facebook. We really can't do anything. And there was 100% threats, you know, threats that you can only make, well, you can't only make towards a woman, that, but are generally directed towards a woman that's the type of threats he was making right also towards the kids so my family rachel and even myself they were like yo do not whatever you do do not feed into this do not you know this man is not he's not dealing with a full deck you know they were worried that i was going to respond in the wrong way and end up going back to the penitentiary and so was i so I, I was extremely patient because I knew the man was, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's slow, you know, for, for a lack of better words, he's not mentally all there and, you know, he's, he's, he's slow. So I sort of gave him the benefit of the doubt, but I was like, damn, when does, when does enough become enough, Right. When does enough become enough? And I had numerous people when this was going on that, you know, friends from the channel that were happened to be on Facebook, they were reaching out, you know, and a lot of people, listen, and I had a lot of my homies that reached out and was like, yo, just say the word and we'll go get them. And it was very tempting, very, very tempting. But I didn't want that. First of all, I don't want that on my conscience, right? I don't want that in my karma, I just don't want it. Even if it was, even if I knew that I could do something to him and it could be 100% justified and legal, I, I, I don't want that. I don't want to hurt anybody. I've hurt people in my life before. I don't want to do that. That's not the way I want to live my life now. So long story short, uh, that goes on for a while, right? He's back. Sunday, me and Mercy, we go to the barbershop before we head to Major's wrestling tournament. She had left her coat there from the day before. So we go to pick up her coat. I pull up. I pull up in front of the shop with Mercy. Mercy's in the back seat in her car seat. And I noticed somebody that was sort of looking in the shop window. It didn't strike me as strange or anything like that. I was like, all right, maybe they're seeing if the shop's open or just happen to be passing by and sort of peeking in. It didn't strike me as strange. <clears throat> so they keep on walking. I get out of the car. I start going towards the front door. And when I put the key in, I hear somebody. And I didn't really make out what they were saying, you know. And then I heard it again. And so I started paying attention, but I'm still unlocking the door, you know, the deadbolt and the other lock. And I hear it. And they're saying, hey, you devil. Oh, look, it's the devil. And I looked. And at first, I didn't even realize they were talking to me. And I look to the side. And I see a man, a tall man, there speaking. He wasn't really close to me. You know, he was maybe 20 feet away, sort of sort of yelling. And I look, and I didn't even recognize him. Because like I said, once again, I don't really know who he is, especially face to face. 
and he keeps on saying it. And he says, oh, there's the devil there. And then everything he was saying was the stuff he said in the past. So I looked and I was like, oh, snap. So <clears throat> mind you, I have mercy in the car, right? And he was closer to my vehicle than I was. Uh, my windows are tinted, so he obviously couldn't see that she's in there. Thank God. So I, I, you know, I had my key fob in my pocket and I just hit the lock button on the vehicle. And uh, I responded to him. I said something. And then I told, I said, well, why don't you come here and say what you got to say, you know? And he took a couple steps close and then I took a step and then he stopped in his tracks. And at this time, I didn't really know what exactly was going to happen. I didn't know if things were going to get physical. I didn't know, you know, if things were going to turn ugly. I was prepared for either way, though, in my head, you know. And um, I knew, I said, okay, legally, things are going to be a lot better if I'm on my property. If I'm in front of my business, I sort of have to let him come to me, you know. So I just said, look, why don't you come over here and talk to me, you know. And, uh, you know, I said, look, why don't you come over here and talk like a man? You ain't got to do this screaming and, you know, calling the devil and all that stuff. I said, just come over here and talk to me. And uh, he took a couple more steps. And uh, as soon as he crossed on to the sidewalk that was sort of in front of the shop, you know, I said, OK, he's he's uh, he's essentially close enough. And then I took a step and he sort of ran back and then he started yelling and. And uh, once again, I said, look, why don't you talk to me over here? Why don't you, you, you stop yelling? You're making a scene. Just come over here and talk to me. Or if there's something you feel like you need to do, come and do it. At this point, I said, okay, if he comes to me, I'm going to punish him. I'm going to punish him. All that other stuff is out the window. You know, he, I was extremely patient. And that, that went on for months last time, right? So then he ends up getting a little closer and I back up, you know, hoping that, okay, he's going to get close enough. And then, you know, I'll get my hands on him and we'll go from there. And he doesn't really get close enough so I could grab my hands on him, right? I could have easily, you know, rushed him and gripped him up, but I knew that wouldn't be deemed as, you know, sort of self-defense. I knew that would have been looked at as me, the aggressor. So I just sort of was talking to him like, yo, why don't you come over here? So he got so upset and he's yelling and yelling, you know, and I'm speaking in a calm voice. I just say, yo, come here, man. Stop all that yelling. He got close and he said, well, let's fight right now. And I said, all right, no problem. I said, look, we could go in the shop. We could step in the shop and, and rumble if you want, or we could rumble right here. You know, and he, he said, come on, let's go in the alley. Let's go across the street. You know, I said, well, it ain't start over there. Let's come on, you know. And then he was, you know, he's, once again, he wouldn't get close enough so I could grab him. So I, anyway, I said, well, come on then, you know, and thought maybe if I throw my hands up, he'll come and, you know, and he sort of like took a step to get close. And I just stomped my foot because every time I sort of went to walk, he would start running back. So I just stomped my foot. I said, let me see what happens. I stomped my foot. And dude started hauling ass across the street. Literally almost got hit by a car. And instantly when I seen that, I said, all right. He's acting like a fool. But he don't really, he's not really a fool. You know, he don't really want to get crazy. And at this time, I wanted to. Mercy's in a car. He's causing a scene. And instantly everything he said from the past and had done in the past came back. And I said, if I get my hands on him, it's going to be a very bad night. Or a very bad morning. And, uh, you know, that went on for a couple seconds. And then I said, all right. You know, he I seen he wasn't getting close, so I just grabbed my phone. And, uh, you know, just hit the record button so I had proof. And then I see him. He takes off running. And the police office, the police, you know, building department... It's only like two blocks from the shop. And I see instantly he's running straight there, full speed. So I said, oh, he's going to go try to tell the cops on me. So I grab Mercy's coat. As soon as I get back in the car, Mercy says, 
who is that guy screaming at you, daddy? And I said, no, nah, that's just my friend. We're playing, you know, and this I got on video also. She said, no, who, who is that guy screaming at you? I seen him on my window. You know, I said, no, 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 mama. I said, just, that's just one of my friends. He's, you know, we're just joking around. So I pulled up to the police station and sure enough, I see him going in. I park my car, Mercy's inside. I get out, I lock her in there. I start to go up the steps to the police station and he comes out. And when he sees me, he's completely shocked. He has, there's two officers behind him walking and he shoots out the other side and starts screaming and says, what are we going to do about him? What are we, you know, and the cops are, t the cops are aware of, of his antics and what he does. Um, needless to say, I'm at, I leave, I go to Major's wrestling match and he starts again through, through a Facebook messenger, starts his threats again, starts his antics again. That's what I've been dealing with for the past few weeks. So for anybody who's been reaching out, I haven't been picking up your phone calls. I've been a little distracted, to say the least. And uh, last time, I was extremely patient with this man, extremely patient. Way more patient than I've ever been in my life. I tolerated way more than I ever tolerated in my life. Not this time. This time, he's already crossed those lines. Uh, this time, he's going to get everything he's asking for. And he's going to find out, like a lot of us do. Sometimes we ask for stuff, and when we get it, it's not what we want. Right? That's what happens sometimes. You know... And I told him, I said, this is going to end up very bad. And it's not going to be bad for me. It's going to be bad for you. It's going to be bad for me in the sense that I'm going to have to pay a lawyer. And I'm going to have to worry about going back to the penitentiary. Because of this fool. So I just figured I'd share this with y'all. Let y'all know where I've been. Do me a favor. Keep us in your prayers and keep him in your prayer also. Because at night when I say my prayers, I include him. Once again, the last thing that I want to do is hurt anybody, even if I'm justified. Even if legally I'm justified, I don't want that. I don't want to hurt nobody. I'll be the first one to tell you that. I do not want to hurt nobody. I've done enough of that over the course of my life. That's the last thing that I want. Sometimes people force your hand though, right? Hopefully that doesn't become a situation, right? I have a feeling it will be. I definitely have a feeling it will be. So... Do me a favor, keep us all in your prayers, please and thank you. Have a great night. Be kind, loving, and patient. Stay blessed, y'all. Gotta give, sir.